Hi guys, Daryl here, and we're going to get into our second session of teaching on how to share your faith. This is exciting because we're actually going to develop and refine your testimony. Remember, this is all about your personal story. We're not plagiarizing it from anyone else. We're not memorizing a whole bunch of theology. This is your personal story. I always encourage people, when you share your faith, lead with your story. If they're not interested in your personal story, they're definitely not going to be interested in your theology. And when you refine this, you can get it down to one minute, and it helps so much uh, when you do that because you know exactly where you're going. That's what you want to do because one of the three reasons that people can't share their faith or are afraid to share their faith, one of the main reasons is they don't know what to say. We're going to start to teach you right now on what to say. So I'm excited about this session. Remember now, Jesus, when he said, uh, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. He didn't, he didn't cover it up, did he? He told us exactly where he was going to go with us. Um, if you follow me, this is what you got to expect me to do. I'm going to refine you. And Jesus is with us today. And he's excited about this moment because you are becoming a fisher of man. Okay, so... When uh, you've uh, finished your uh, beginning of the conversation, like we shared in the last session, how to start a conversation, you've asked the questions that, ca that cause them to open the door, give you permission to share your faith. Then comes you having to begin. We all start with B.C., before Christ. What was your life like before you met Jesus? Now, to be fair, I realize that some of you maybe gave your life to Christ when you were uh, very, very young. And so uh, you can't even remember when you uh, uh, accepted Christ. But let's make sure our theology is straight. Every one of us has A, B, C. Every one of us uh, are children of God if we've received Christ. That's in John chapter 1. To as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of God. So you're either a child or you're not. You're either part of the family or you're not. And you didn't become part of the family by growing up in a Christian home or being a good person or getting your church doctrine all figured out uh, or learning all the ropes and, and pulling them in the right direction at the right time. That's not how we get saved. Now I realize I'm probably preaching to the choir with 99% of you, but there's always a chance there's that one person listening to this and you're recognizing right now that you've never really surrendered to Christ in a personal way. You've been depending on the fact that you grew up in a good Christian home, a good Christian church, good Christian morals, good Christian parents, but you personally have never received Christ. If that's the case, let's pray right now. Lord, I surrender my life to you. You are my king. I recognize you died for my sin. Not just my parents, not just other people, but you died for mine. And I ask you to forgive me, and I know you're holding your hand outstretched to me. I take your hand. I become your child in this moment. I know that God raised you from the dead, Jesus. And I confess with my mouth right now, you are Lord, and I take your hand, and I am your child forevermore. In your wonderful name, amen. So if you've never received Christ, you know when your BC started? Your, your uh, well, this was your turning point. That's the next session, but your BC was everything before this point. So you could uh, say, if that fit you, or you could say, I grew up in a church. Uh, I never really knew Christ. Uh, I always thought that just being good was good enough, or however you would want to word that. But let me address all of you right now. So we've got our theology straight. Everyone has a BC, a before Christ. So this is how you do the before Christ. I want you to right now, maybe get out a little, even a post-it note and write down three things that define your life before you met Christ. With me, it was, I just say, there was a time in my life that I was lonely, confused, and angry. Those are my three things. Don't write 10. <laughs> don't write one or two, write three things that define your life before you met Christ. 
And uh, if you don't have time to do it while I'm talking, this is a real easy session. It will be done in just a few seconds here. Write them down later on. Begin that BC with the phrase, there was a time in my life. And then finish it with those three words. Maybe you were uh, uh, without purpose. Maybe you were searching for friendship and it was elusive. Maybe you, you were angry. Maybe uh, you did drugs. Maybe you were a drunk. Some people actually go that far, you know. <laughs> All those sinners that maybe I never achieved to those kinds of words. But boy, I was lost. I was, uh, I was lonely. I was confused and I was angry. Those are my three lost confused, angry. So there was a time in my life that I was really lost. I, I, there was a time in my life I was really lonely and confused and angry. So now that's your BC. That's all there is to it. Uh, if you want to add like two sentences to that, you can do that. Like I might add a couple sentences like there was a time in my life that I was really lonely, confused, and angry. My father died when I was nine years old. Uh, my mother married another man, and my home was filled with anger and confusion. So I add, what is that? I guess I added three sentences, but you can't take up too much time because we're going to try to make your uh, BC last no longer than 15 seconds. So um, write down those things. There was time in my life, the three words, maybe a couple sentences. Memorize that, and we'll see you again with the next session. God bless you.